live from John Hammond Street, digital address GA006-6714. This is News 360 from Addison. We're here in Accra. I am Yisa Mooney. I'm Nasri Four to look at the top stories this evening. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint, Piccadilly Biscuits, and My Life Insurance. On top on the news this evening, workers of Awaso Bauxite Mine go on rampage and protest at poor working conditions. Member of Parliament for Boku Central, Mahama Yariga, to answer charges of using public office for private benefit as court strikes out three other charges. Also ahead this evening, Ministry of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development blames fishermen for low fish catch after a closed season. In business, group calling itself Lumin National Members challenge statement by Ioko describing the investment deal as a scam. And elsewhere on the continent, former Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi dies in court. We have all the details, including sports and entertainment, coming up this hour. And tonight, workers of the Ghana bauxite mine at Awaso in the western region went on rampage, burning a pickup truck belonging to the company. The action is to protest the poor working conditions faced by over 600 contract workers. The agitation TV3 understands is born out of salary and pay disparities. Information indicate an office building has also been burnt down while roads have been blocked with burning vehicles. Right, let's speak on this issue some more. On the phone is the acting secretary to the contract staff, Selom Heyman. Selom, good evening, and thank you for joining us. Yeah, evening, sir. Good. So, uh, can you confirm the demonstration and the destruction of property belonging to Awaso Bauxite Company by the workers? Sorry, sir. I wouldn't say it's a demonstration because there was no notice to anybody. It was just what the Ridge of Angara brought about all this. So, months ago, we did demonstrate. We petitioned the minister, the regional minister, the MCs, on our unfair labor practices that is going on. Mm. We've been sitting with on a negotiation table based on the union that we are part of. But they are not willing to comply with our demands. So that's what has raised the report that the workers to go to this extent of what they are doing us in today. Salam, what property have been vandalized by the rampaging workers? Okay, vandalized, let's see, there are bent cars that's on the scene right now. For now, that's what I can confirm to you. Cars belonging to who? Is it the company or... Other people. All right, the line went bad. I didn't hear you clearly. Uh, what, is the, what is the situation as we speak right now? Have things calmed down? No, please. It's not down yet because still the workers are still on the edge. They are still here roaming in and out, just trying to wait for the response from management to know what's next. So, what exactly are the demands? The demands is like, in every company where it's supposed to be a union, we were trying to form this union years back. We put in our best, but if it goes in, then what is that particular yes, then it leads to the rest. So it's like an up and down something. We fought through, we've now formed the union. The union is now moving. All right. Because without a, without a CBA, then meaning there's no union. So it's a CBA that we are trying to work on to, what, to go ahead with whatever it's right in it. It's been years now we've been on that CBD. Today we go, tomorrow they say this because they are saying, let's say, let me say, the jet that he doesn't want, no, he knows our agencies. So it's like the agency from the minister, whatever our demands are, give it to him to give it to the mother company. Then he also come back with a counter offer. So that's how it's happening now. But with the counter offer, it's not speaking, it's not helping, it's not what entering into the what's the interest of the workers or the employees. Mm. Seven in number. We want to sit down. Let's see. All right. It's three. So, well, 
Uh, Salam uh -huh. Herman, we, the, the line is going bad, and uh, we'll find time and get back to you and speak to you more. Salam Herman is the secretary to the contract workers of Awaso Bauxite Mines. Thank you for speaking to us. I see. So let's turn to some other stories this evening. As an Accra High Court has struck out three of four charges leveled against Member of Parliament for Boko Central, Mahama Ayariga. Another charge against a businessman who allegedly assisted the MP to evade taxes has also been struck out with the court setting the businessman free. The charges are fraudulent evasion of customs duties and taxes dealing in foreign exchange without license and transfer of foreign exchange from Ghana through an unauthorized dealer. The court presided over by Justice Sawa Efiaboche said the particulars of those offenses did not relate to corruption or corruption related offenses and are not under the remit of the Office of the Special Prosecutor. The decision by the court leaves Mahama Yariga with answering to the charge of using public office for private benefit. The embattled MP's countersuit against Martin Amidu was also dismissed by the court. In the application, Mahama Yariga argued that Martin Amidu is above 65 years and therefore per Article 199, 1 and 4 of the 1992 constitution is not qualified to hold public office. The court said a determination on the capacity of the special prosecutor meant the court would be usurping the powers of the Supreme Court. The special prosecutor, Martin Amidu, sued the member of parliament on five counts, including evasion of taxes and taxes. Joined to the suit was one Kendrick Akwesi Mafum of Atlas Rent-A-Car Company. According to the read, Mahama Yariga in November 2017, fraudulently evaded customs duties and taxes by paying 6,062.86 CDs instead of the approved duties and taxes of 36,597.15 CDs to clear three Toyota V8 land cruisers. He was also accused of allegedly abusing his office as a public officer for his private benefit for selling three Toyota V8 land cruisers with registration numbers GR222018, GR222118, and GR222218, meant for official duties as a member of parliament to Kendrick Akwesi. The court also admitted the remaining six accused persons, including a municipal chief executive of Boku Haji Ahawa Nietzsche, to a bail bond of 50,000 with two sureties. The case has been adjourned to July 8, 2019. Komla Kluche, TV3 News, Accra. And now a group of unidentified men have forcibly closed down about 20 shops operated by Nigerians in Swami. Now the attacks were believed to be in response to the recent reports of Nigerians involved in alleged kidnappings in the country. Bitis Biogabra is at the scene and joins us live on Skype right now to tell us more about what is breaking out now in Kumasi. Hello, good evening, Beatrice. And thank good you for evening, joining us. Sir. Right, what, what, you. what can you tell us about this latest uh, kidnapping case from Kumasi? Well, the latest, um, after the kidnapping and the rescue of the Canadian woman, is that some Nigerian traders at the Swab magazine enclave have had their shops forcibly locked by some unidentified young men. Um, we went there late this afternoon and we saw that about 20 of these shops have been locked. Um, I asked if they were locked by these unidentified young men or by the Nigerians themselves, but they said they were in the shops and these young men came um, holding machetes and other dangerous weapons, asking them that if they do not they do not lock up their shops and go back to their home country, that is Nigeria, they would have themselves to be blamed. So they would have to comply with the threats from these young men. So they have to lock up the shops themselves. That is, the Nigerians have to lock up the shops under the threats of these, from these young men. And they had to follow up at the Swami and um, district police command to, to make a report as to the threat. But according to the Nigerians, this did not start today. It started from Thursday. 
but the police were able to calm the situation. So on Friday and Saturday, they were able to um, open the shop and trade peacefully. But this morning, they started having the threats and the attacks again from some of these unidentified young men. So, so Beatrice, do you know if uh, any Nigerian has been hurt? I mean, since this, uh, 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 since this uh, uh, attempt by some people, we don't know if all of them are Ghanaians or they are also other nationals, but I mean, presumably from Kumasi, do you know if anybody has been attacked? Yes, I saw two of them. One had a um, blood eye shot because according to him, he was, he was slapped by um, one young man. And then there was an old man who is about, about 55, getting to 60 years, who tells me that he was also assaulted. He had um, his buttocks hit with a weapon, and then on the skull, you could see a plaster that he had also been to the hospital to get the wound on the skull um, treated. And he tells me that um, these were some of the, uh, the, the wounds that he, he, he sustained from the attack from some of these young men. Do you know if the police will uh, assist them to open their shores back soon? I mean, to get their businesses back on? Yes, we, we met them at the Swami District Police Command. That is where um, Swami Magazine, that is the jurisdiction that is forced under the Swami Divisional Police Command. So the Nigerians marched up and went to the Divisional Police Command to lodge an official complaint. And we followed up with the Divisional Commander to ask him what necessary steps they are taking to ensure that these Nigerians can go about their normal duties. But he told me that the case has been asked to be referred to the Regional Police Command. So the Regional Police Command is handling it. And the PRO, um, a follow-up again to the Regional Police PRO, he told me that the, the command will be meeting the Nigerians and some members of Guta tomorrow to find a lasting solution. As to why Guta is coming in, I am not so sure about it, but we did meet some of executives of Guta also at Swami Magazine alongside the executives of the Nigerian Traders Association. So tomorrow, hopefully, the regional police command will be taking up the issue to investigate and also know the next line of action that the police will be taking. But until Beach, then, yeah. the Nigerians cannot have their shops open because they say that they are afraid. They don't know what will happen to them if they open up their shops. Beatrice Pio Gabra, our Shanti Regional Correspondent, uh, correspondents, talking to us about the fallout from the recent cases of kidnappings in the Shanti region. And the final case today is that some people are forcing the Nigerians who operate shops in the Shanti region to close shop. In a way. So to some other top stories this evening, as the Ministry of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development has blamed the low catch of fish in some part of the country on the choice of dates for the ban. Deputy Director in Charge of Administration and Operations at the Ministry, Paul Bannerman, told TV3 the story would have been different if the fishermen agreed to have the ban on fishing placed in August instead of May. Some fishermen at Jamestown Landing Beach Sunday morning June 16 expressed their anger due to their inability to harvest more fish as was expected after a month's ban on fishing. Look here. If you print the fish come, you see, look here, no fish. According to the fishermen, if the situation remains the same, they will resist any attempt by the ministry to close the sea again next year. That notwithstanding, fishermen in other parts of the country, especially in Winneba, recorded sufficient catch. Some interested parties maintain it is too early to gauge the success of the month-long ban as some fishers are yet to return. Speaking to TV3, Deputy Director, Administration Operation of the Ministry of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development, Paul Banama, said it was impossible to close the sea for just one month and expect to harvest so much. You don't expect to lay eggs, fish to lay eggs, and within one month they become adults. There are various stages in life. You grow from an egg onto a juvenile. <laughs> 
Hello, good evening, and welcome to the business news segment here on News 360. My name is Parker Siasari. Thank you very much for making a date with us. Now, the World Bank's fourth economic update has tipped Ghana to be the fastest growing mobile money market in Africa. The report indicates that mobile money penetration increased opportunities for expansion of financial services and the role of non financial institutions positioning Ghana as the fastest growing mobile money market in Africa. The 45-page report, which focuses on financial sector development and financial inclusion, indicated the potential of digital financial services and payments to further enhance financial inclusion in Ghana. Speaking at the launch of the report, World Bank Country Director Dr. Henry Corrali said, Ghana's economy has had a turnaround over the past two years. He noted the significant growth in the number of financial access points over the past five years primarily related to the spread of mobile money and government's commitment to driving digitization and innovation in payments. He lauded the introduction of mobile money interoperability. The government has implemented some key steps, such as the establishment of uh, financial access points and the expansion of mobile money, as well as the establishment of uh, mobile money switching between banks and mobile money operators. The report further acknowledged the gender gap in financial inclusion and offered five recommendations that could enhance financial inclusion in the country. Universal access is an attainable target, particularly with the use of technology. We therefore encourage the government to take the lead with implementing more of the financial inclusion systems and, in particular, its own strategy on financial inclusion. Dr. Henry Corrali urged commitment to the fiscal responsibility law and commended the Bank of Ghana for efforts taken to clean up the financial sector. In other news, a digital marketer of MTN, Daru Bianchi, has entreated management of companies to harness digital marketing to grow their business. He was speaking with the young chief executive officers at a summit in Accra, geared towards building their capacity to fully maximize opportunities in the digital space. The summit forms part of MTN's 21 Days of Yellow Care campaign launched in 2007 to encourage staff of the telecommunication company to participate in 21 Days Community Service in June each year. Staff of MTN operations worldwide will compete to ascertain the highest number of staff involved in volunteerism and those who have initiated projects to identify the most impactful on society. Currently, 10.3 million people globally use the internet, with Facebook being the dominant, with 79% users. Social media, for example, you can immediately talk to all your customers. We, we saw that on, in, in, uh, in, uh, in Ghana, we have more than 5 million customers who are on Facebook. So with one simple post, you can then talk to all these, all these customers. So that's why digital marketing can be really a very effective and cheap way to uh, talk to customers and promote your, your product. Senior manager of MTN, Robert Kujo, entreated participants to fully maximize opportunities presented by digital marketing. Each young CEO to our senior leadership of the business, so they would have an opportunity to engage, sit by our CEO, our corporate services executive, our customer relations executive, our network executive, all the CEOs and the general managers and senior managers of MTN Ghana. Now, they are going to share their experiences. You would know that setting up a business obviously would come with a challenge. And so the CEOs or the executive leadership of MTN is going to help them go through this phase. Chief Executive Officer of Tukwan Liability Limited, Philip Ayadako, reiterated the impact of digital marketing on businesses. Most of the times we, we here, we use the waterfall model. Um, I started my business and then I wanted to build the product before I come on board with marketing and everything. But I just learned today that I have to do more of the marketing and the research into the marketing before I even come up with the product. So moving back home, I'm going to work on the market research and the questionnaires that is going to help me pro, um, bring my business out there. 50 young CEOs attended the summit. 
All right, so lots of companies that are harnessing the opportunities in the digital space. And of course, MTN is no exception. That's all for the business news segment here on News 360. My name is Parker Siasari. Thanks very much for watching. For more business news stories, you can log on to our website, www.3news.com. Over to you, Isa. Thank you, Paco. Let's do some pseudo business related stories. President Ikuvado has returned from a week's trip to Geneva, Switzerland, where he addressed the ELO centenary celebration and toured some Caribbean countries to promote the year of return for Africans in the diaspora. At the 108th ILO meeting, the president called for change in the governance structure of the organization to promote decent work and advance social justice. At the Caribbean, Guyana conferred the highest national award on President Ikufuado as Ghana announced the offer of free technical assistance to Guyana following oil and gas discoveries in the country. Addressing the House of Assembly of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, President Ikufuado told the people to visit Ghana in this year of return as it is one of the safest countries in the West African sub-region. He again called on the people of Trinidad and Tobago to visit Ghana in the year of return to mark the 400th year anniversary of the transatlantic slave trade. In Barbados, the president announced Ghana will send some 375 qualified nurses to work in Barbados at the request of Prime Minister Maya Amor Motley of Barbados. Finally, in Jamaica, Ghana and the Caribbean country agreed to waive entry visa requirements for citizens of the two countries. Well, stay with us here on News 360. We've got sports news coming up shortly. Hello, good evening, and it's time for us to do some sports here on News 360. My name is Thierry Nyan. Now we start off in Egypt, where the Black Stars vice captain, uh, you know, Koja Samoa, says that he has held talks with the head coach, Kwesi Apia, on the position he's going to be playing at the AFCON 2019. All of that is clear. I'm a player that can play so many roles on the field of play. I can be a midfielder, I can support also the attack, I can play as a left uh, back and also left forward. So with me, um, I, had, um, I spoke with the coach and I told him like he knows the qualities that I have and then what I can do for this national team. So we shared an idea and I told him he know perfectly when I come to the national team, when I play for midfield, I excel more than playing from the back because African football is totally different from Europe because Europe, the way we play, um, it depends on how the coach wants us to play. But African football is more physically and, and then um, there's no space. So with me playing from the left back, I will, I will not find it easy. So with what people know and what I know and what everyone knows like what i can do to help the national team i'm always good playing when i play from the midfield so he also accepted and he said okay i'll try and play you from the midfield but in any situation or any case we need help from the left back i'm always there All right, now former Black Star player John Pinto says that a United team front will play a crucial role in the team's performance at the upcoming AFCON. In an interview with Jilabewa, he speaks about maintaining an efficient team, cohesion and discipline. Capped 89 times for Ghana, the former Fulham player says player discipline and unity will be important if the Black Stars are to come out successful at the AFCON in Egypt. The team needs to come together uh, with determination, hard work, uh, confidence and also teamwork and then respect. And I think um, the coach being there for the players, players being there for the coach. Players must play for the coach first before even the nation, national team. Underscoring the importance of motivation, he says the team will have to stay grounded, bond well, be selfless, as well as put in a lot of work. In terms of discipline, discipline means keeping their position right. Those who need to recover should recover. The team shape needs to be accurate. 
not left left wing going, left back going, and then the other centre backs holding the middle. If the if the coach asks them to keep the chain, they must keep the chain. They understand this terms. So um, with all this, everything will come right with them. But if they lose focus, if they lose discipline on the field, that they can get punished because nowadays all the African countries. They are doing well, they are pushing their players up and down. And on the field of playing, each and everyone needs to be a, a leader on the field. Ultimately, he is confident a Black Stars with the right team cohesion will be efficient and inch closer to winning the trophy. We have all it takes to win it. If the motivation is there, the players coming together, nothing will stop them. The Black Stars will open the AFCON 2019 campaign on June 25 against Benin. Meanwhile, host France are also drawing 0-0 with Nigeria. It's halftime at the moment in that particular game. We'll bring you some more developments subsequently right here on TV3. My name is Thierry Nyan. Thanks for watching. Welcome back to News 360. In entertainment news this evening, the maiden edition of TV3's next top actor reality show has come to an end with Emmanuel Lechu, also known as Emma K, emerging winner, he walked home with the bragging rights, a cash of 10,000 CDs, movie deals, and products from sponsors. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Emma K! In a period of 10 weeks, 10 promising actors comprising five ladies and five gentlemen were shortlisted to battle it out on who becomes Ghana's next top actor. Five versatile actors were ticked for the grand finale in line with the rules of the show. Fans of finalists thronged TV3's executive theater to cheer them. With a total point of 27.31%, Ima K beat his other contenders to emerge Ghana's next top actor walking home with a total of 10,000 Ghana cities, movie deals and other consolation prizes. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Emma K! Love is, the love is too much. It's, it's a roller coaster of emotions right now. I, I, I give thanks to God for bringing me this far. I give thanks to Ghanaians for believing in me and pushing me to this point for me to emerge as the next top actor. Imake on a roller coaster right there. Now, Sunday, June 16 was Father's Day. The entertainment team has been finding out from some members of the public their views about giving fathers paternity leave. It will be okay if companies will do that, okay? Because it will also uh, encourage the fathers to actually learn how to take care of their kids at that infant uh, level, yes. So I think it will be a good thing to do. It would have been okay for fathers to, to enjoy paternity leave. If only they will be able to stay with their wives and stay with their kids. When their wives give birth to children, they see it as an opportunity to get free time to enjoy with other women. So you give him the paternity leave, instead of being at home, you spend this time outside at the drinking bar, beer bars, and at times running away with other women. Paternity leave is a very key component of everybody's uh, working life because when the baby is born, the possibility of the father getting closer to the baby, helping the mother to nurture that baby, and for that baby to be able to be a very good baby is a responsibility of both gender. It's not only the responsibility of the mother, it's a responsibility of the mother and the father. So I strongly support paternity leave. I think it would be good to give some time off, but whether you call it paternity leave, I'm not sure. See, businesses also rely on workers. So if you have to give away time for your workers, for the ladies and the men, who's going to do the work? 
is going well, to happen. Well, it's obvious. <laughs> Some people don't want it. I think it's a good move, no? <laughs> well, it shouldn't be long enough for people to exploit That's it. True. I think that <laughs> maternity true. leave is certainly important. Very. You're watching the News 360. That's it for this edition. There will be more updates on 3news.com. I am Lisa Morning. I'm Natalie Force. Thanks so much for watching and have a lovely evening.